Welcome on someone. Today we are speaking about burials in the Norse religion. Um, I'm going to get, it's a bit of a boring subject, but it's really the number one most important thing that I've spoken about so far because in the Norse world they had a specific burial practice that we don't know much about and it seems to have some kind of influence or perhaps even full-on control of who you could come back reincarnated in as the next life. If you could control who you would come back reincarnated as in the next life, wouldn't you want to? Yeah, I definitely would. So I can tell you, as someone who has read all of the sagas pretty much, the Christian authors, they tried very hard uh, not to record what our actual funerals and burials were like. The sagas are actually super detailed with great info about everything, but whenever it comes to a time that a saga tells about a pagan burial, they simply say, and they were buried according to the customs of the time, and they brush right past it, really. All of the sagas do this, and, and no information about what burials were like back then. There's something here, guys. They are clearly trying to hide something. A uh, very important part of our religion. All of the um, authors of the sagas were Christian, uh, trying to cover up certain pagan practices. So we're not going to find any answers there. We have to look at the archaeology, and that's what I'm doing in this video. I did a couple videos about this. If you haven't seen them yet, the links are below. Uh, but basically we find these graves in Scandinavia with the body being buried and weighed down by stones or rocks. It could be a small stone on the chest or it could be many large stones put all over. We find this all over the world but um, more in Scandinavia and historians are pretty sure that this was done actually in order to keep the spirit of that person from walking after they died. It was done to a witch or a criminal in order to prevent their spirit from rising and haunting the village. That is the generally accepted theory among historians and we also have um, examples in the sagas about that actually being done too. There is a less accepted theory. This putting a stone on the chest or weighing down a body uh, of a person. It could be done to a loved one to keep their spirit in place until it was time to be reincarnated. Then they would break into the burial mound or burial place. The rock or rocks would be taken off and the spirit would be free to wander then and find a new body, a new body of a child and the womb um, to enter. So it was a way to kind of control the time and perhaps even uh, place uh, who you would be reincarnated as. So like I said, that's a controversial theory and not very widely accepted, uh, but we're taking a closer um, look at these burials to, uh, to see what the evidence says and figuring it out. As you're going to see, some of them are very clearly witches or criminals and were given a deviant burial, as it was called. Um, basically a dishonorable burial where they just, you know, throw that shit in there, put, put some stones on it to keep the spirit from walking, and then they cover it up uh, with, with the soil. But uh, as you're going to see, a good chunk of these burials... Um, weighed down where stones were not criminals at all. They were actually loved and very high status honored uh, individuals. And this helps prove the theory that actually both of these are true and they are in fact the same thing. The stone can work in both ways, keeping the spirit there. So here's the most famous burial that we can really learn the most from, found in Gjedrup, Denmark. Uh, the man on the left has signs that he died by hanging and no rocks were on his body, but the woman on the left has rocks uh, covering her. She has no signs of a violent death, but we find a spindle on her and also signs of a staff, so a witch and a criminal here in this grave. Another one at uh, Borgeve, uh, Denmark, grave number P. Uh, this one was just a man thrown in there casually, <laughs> crushed by two stones and covered with soil. No sign of a funeral or any respectful burial at all. They just threw him in there. Another one in Lund. Uh, another just basically thrown in there in a hurry, packed inside a small grave and a stone placed on the chest, like, uh, like we find in other places as well. Another one that was probably a criminal. And by the way, a lot of these uh, photos of these are very hard to find. Um, some of them were dug up a hundred years ago and uh, they did not take super good uh, uh, records of it or photos, but uh, there is a link below to a scholarly article that covers all of these and I'm putting up photos if I'm able to find them. 
Uh, another one, and uh, Suslegor, uh, uh, just a casual one, a beheaded skull thrown in there, thrown into a pit with some flat stones covering it, some large flat stones. These uh, are just a few of the burials believed to be criminals or witches or unwanted people because they were buried in a quick and quite disrespectful way, really. And there are many, many more of these, uh, very different to the ones I'm going to speak about in just a second. Uh, at Bulgarai here, another one from this uh, graveyard, in grave number D, a man and a woman were covered by many stones, but, but in this one it was not a disrespectful or, or quick burial like we see in grave number P at this exact same graveyard. Um, so this is kind of how we determine um, deviant burials from honorable ones, that the deviant ones would be buried um, in the side or, or the outskirts of the graveyard and uh, basically hidden away if they were even lucky to be in the graveyard at all. And the high status burials would be centered in the graveyard on usually some sort of high ground, uh, which is a sign of high status. So here we have uh, two graves here covered by stones, but one low status in the outskirts of the graveyard and one high status in the middle. Another one, uh, grave number Y, um, same thing, a burial with two stones covering the chest and pelvis, nothing to indicate that this was anything else other than an honorable burial. Another very famous one is the Usabadic ship in Norway, by far the richest and most detailed Viking Age burial, where two very respected and honored uh, witches were buried in this ship. Uh, here, the entire ship was tied to a large boulder, and this is generally believed that it was done to keep these women's spirits close by in the air to the village, actually, so they could watch after everyone from death. So look, in the Viking Age, this is another very important thing. In the Viking Age and before, there were evil witches and there were good witches. Uh, a lot of people think that witches were only burned and killed in Christian times and you know they were all accepted and loved in pagan times. Oh no, it had nothing to do with the times. If a witch was good, she was loved. If she was evil, she was executed and sent to the abyss not to have her spirit bother us again. It doesn't matter what the time period is. A lot of these modern, you know, wick, uh, witchy people they think that witches were loved no matter what time period. No, only the good ones were loved. Uh, another high status burial was that we find here uh, uh, six large stone slabs covering the grave. Um, big, extravagant, honorable burial here too in the uh, Heistrup. Um, also a side note, we don't always find these in Scandinavia either. We find these in other parts of the Germanic world. This one is from Anglo-Saxon England. There is a young woman buried with a few flint stones covering her. Uh, we don't know much about her besides that she was very high status and an honored individual and she was ill uh, for most of her life. She had little uh, weak, uh, brittle bones. So she was probably, you know, a, a princess or, or nobleman's daughter or something like that. Also something noteworthy, we sometimes find even a combination of these uh, high status and low status burials like this. Uh, Drobi in Shireland, uh, graves one and two, we find a high status person buried under some rocks or stones, but on top of that, a lower status person, presumably a slave or a servant, and then they just put soil on top of that one. So rocks were put on the high status individual, but not the low status individual. Also noteworthy. There were definitely some male sorcerers, um, or Vitki, as they would have been called in the uh, Old Norse world. So uh, in Firkat, uh, in Denmark, grave number four, there was a man buried with a staff and weighed down by a large stone. A not uh, particularly respectable burial, but not a deviant one either. But this is interesting because it's an opposite to the... Um, famous grave we find at Firkat, uh, right here in the same graveyard where we had a very rich high status witch buried with a staff, henbane seeds, and she was presumed to be a servant of the king or something like that. Um, but she was not weighed down by a stone. So finally in Koppasvik, uh, there are uh, in Sweden quite a big cemetery where two out of three of the burials there actually have stones covering the body. All kind of low, respectless burials just thrown in there, and there were no children in this graveyard, and mostly men. So we think this specific burial place is for criminals, or perhaps 
uh, very bad war prisoners. On the other hand, we find things like this a lot in Iceland. Many honorable, respected males that were buried with a stone or multiple stones covering the body. Almost every burial at this site in Iceland. <laughs> My Icelandic pronunciation is not good, but I'm putting the whole long name up here. So these are a few of the burials uh, involving stones covering the body, but there are many, many more, and you get the points. I haven't even started to go over the burial mounds made up entirely of stones, or these kind of runestone type monuments uh, uh, raised to mark a burial uh, that we see here, very famous. So of course, all of these are for very high status, honored individuals here too. I will do another video on just those because that's kind of a, a different thing, but it will come back into the same uh, idea uh, of a burial. But for now, yes, it's very clear that stones placed over the body uh, could stop the spirit of an evil witch or something from haunting the area. We actually have numerous saga mentions of exactly this. Even some law codes found all over Scandinavia that they use as stoning as a sentence and a burial for a witch if she was being evil. You'd kill her with stones and then bury her with stones or by the seashore and this would, say, uh, prevent her spirit from coming back to haunt the village. Even this one, Dalalogen, um, which they mention uh, oh, witches' uh, deaths as food for stones and seashore, uh, like their spirit could be devoured for some time by these stones and, and held in place. But stones on the body, don't forget, were also placed on very high status honorable people too, as you have seen in many of these burials. Why would someone want their spirit trapped in their body of these, you know, honorable family members? Well, I think that this theory that I spoke about in my last video makes sense, that stones were placed on these uh, honorable people in order to keep their spirit from wandering. And then eventually we could dig that person up break into the burial mound, take the stone off, and then that spirit would be free to roam and look for a new body. We also know that burial mound entry was a very, very common uh, part of the Norse uh, spirituality. They would break into these burial mounds, unlike anywhere else in the world. We have almost every burial mound that um, archaeologists have uncovered in Scandinavia uh, has been broken into in some way. Not grave robbery. I did a video on that. Uh, I will put that link below too, as to exactly why this was. And a lot of this, uh, we have a saga telling exactly uh, why they did this, and it was in purpose of reincarnation, the tale of Olaf Geistalalf, who controls his reincarnation and comes back reincarnated actually 150 years later as a king, Olaf the Saint, a very famous king. Uh, so through a burial mound entry and various rituals that I spoke about in my other video and there is also some evidence that instead of a stone it could also be a ring or a sword that would keep the spirit in place because a ring or a sword was also always taken out of the burial mound and given to someone else um, uh, oftentimes in the family so I think there is enough evidence that there that this was believed in and that we ourselves can do this when it's time to die if we are not ready to be reincarnated right away we would prefer to have our spirit wait a little bit uh, maybe a bit until we have a descendant about to be born or you know someone in the village who would uh, we would like to be reincarnated as things like that and then instead of just dying and letting our spirit wander and find the closest you know person to come back reincarnated as we could instruct a trusted friend or family member to go into our burial mound at the right time take the stone remove it and then our spirit would be free to look for the new body that is about to be born into the village a descendant or whoever you want i'll say one more thing it doesn't seem like Placing a rock on the body would be a way to forever keep the spirit trapped. Uh, the stone on the body just delays the spirit from passing a bit on to other places, just like in the law book. Uh, food for stones that I just mentioned is, is uh, referred to. But also in Gretir's saga, uh, there was an evil sorcerer who haunted the village, and this was even after he was buried under a pile of stones. It was just delayed a bit, but eventually his spirit was able to come out and haunt the village, so they had to rebury him somewhere else. 
So no fear, everyone, if you die and somehow end up being crushed by a big boulder, don't worry, your spirit can walk again too and be reincarnated. It will just take a lot longer than someone who is cremated, for example. Now the big question is how long do all these things take and can we use this ourselves? I think we can figure out uh, this answer. We have enough information in related religions such as Hinduism and also some scientific studies um, that actually put a general average time frame of 16 months from death to rebirth. A book about that is in the link below going over uh, some really interesting evidence from the modern times. But of course, reincarnation as we have seen in the saga of Olav Geistalalf, it could be 150 years if done correctly. Um, and there were actual really rituals that we did in the north that could, you know, keep especially evil individuals from re being reincarnated for thousands of years or even forever. Um, but I'll go into that in another video. Side notes before I finish this video, maybe it's a bit of a conspiracy theory too. In Scandinavia, it's actually illegal for anyone to dig into these burial mounds as they are protected heritage sites. Even archaeologists, they are allowed to dig into normal graves, but not the many thousands of burial mounds um, where the bravest, most honorable men would uh, traditionally be buried. So it could be that a lot of our bravest and most honorable heroes from the Viking Age have had their spirit trapped for a thousand years in these burial mounds. Um, and explains why so many Scandinavians <laughs> are a bunch of wimps today, at least compared to a thousand years ago. It makes it easier for the government to have total control like they do uh, today, especially in my home country of Norway. Uh, we have a few, don't, don't get me wrong, we have a few very, very strong individuals today in Scandinavia, but there are ten times more a bunch of wimps like puppies and they do whatever they are told. I think if we opened up some of these burial mounds, which was actually a normal part of our religion in old times, every single burial mound would be opened uh, eventually in, in uh, pagan times. If we did this, I think some of these heroes might be reborn and people <laughs> would have a bit more balls in Scandinavia today. But that's just my theory. I don't expect you to believe that. But um, yeah, uh, I hope you learned something there. There are many, many ways... Uh, that there were burials and uh, and uh, cremations or funeral practice, all kinds of different ways that uh, someone could be buried in the Old Norse world. Um, everything happens for a reason. All of these were done for a very, very specific purpose. Nothing was random. That's one thing you will learn by looking at the archaeology, the myths, the sagas, everything. Nothing was just done randomly. If it was there, if it was done, it was a specific purpose for it. And I think we have figured out this. This is just the beginning to start figuring out these things. I think with some more research, I think we can, uh, we can really uncover some interesting things and actually have influence on who we will come back as in the next life. So that's all I'll say for today. Vi ses nästa gång.